We're here in the Beretta Gallery at the National Firearms Museum. We also call it the Roosevelt Room, a recreation of Theodore Roosevelt's study on Sagamore Hill. Of course, Roosevelt was President of the United States, a prolific author with dozens of books to his credit, a winner of both the Nobel Peace Prize and the Congressional Medal of Honor. However, before he was any of those things, in 1898, he resigned his position as Under Secretary of Navy to help lead and raise the first volunteer cavalry, Roosevelt's Rough Riders, to serve in the Spanish-American War. The very day that he left New York for San Antonio to train the Rough Riders, he received this revolver, a Smith & Wesson New Model Number 3. The Smith & Wesson Model 3 refers to any of the large frame Smith & Wesson top brake revolvers first introduced in 1870 and produced up through the turn of the century. The new model number three was probably the perfection of this single action design. As with other model threes, it's a top brake revolver with simultaneous ejection uh, automatically of the cartridges when the firearm is open and it's designed to be fired in single action mode. It was a, a very popular revolver with uh, target shooters, very accurate, uh, dependable revolver, and probably held most of the target records at the time. This particular revolver is a very unique new model number three. The standard production uh, chambering for these was 44 Russian. However, this one's chambered for the 38 service cartridge. Only a handful of guns uh, from Smith & Wesson were chambered in this cartridge, but it makes sense that Roosevelt going into the service would want a revolver that took the standard military issue round. It also has the unusual fixed combat target sights. This gave a better sight picture than tr the traditional fixed sights of the uh, new Model 3 revolver, but were sturdier than the uh, more fragile target sights of the era. As befits a person of Roosevelt's stature, it's also engraved uh, at the Smith & Wesson factory by one of the young family members, probably Gustav Young himself. He picked up this revolver on his way to train the Rough Riders, and we think he probably intended to take it with him to Cuba. However, before he led his troops up San Juan Hill and Kettle Hill, he had received a gift of a Colt double action revolver in the 38 service cartridge that had been salvaged from the sunken battleship main. And it was that revolver that he carried up San Juan Hill and used to lethal effect in his battle with the Spaniards there.